What's going on today, guys? Well, we might just have the answer to all of our prayers. Now, I know we have not really been given a guideline of what's going to be coming to us in Destiny this year, but this just slapped onto uh, Reddit's front page, and it's this little poster right here. Now, this has been something I think has been out before. i never seen it before, but the title said, New, not same old pick of possible Destiny DLC, Rise of Iron. Now let's just take a look at the pick here. It's a guy, of course, with Iron Banner armor, and he's wielding a big ass axe. It's full of flames, just like all the iron stuff, Iron Banner stuff is all about. But look at the wall, and as you can see, guys, the wall is still still on fire. So this is definitely damage that just happened. And of course, the wolves themselves are known as like you know that's just that's kind of surrounded what Iron Banner is all about, the wolves around his chest, the wolves, the Iron Lords themselves being lone wolves, and you know, of course, when you get strength of the, or, or you actually get strength of the wolf metal, it's very similar to what Iron Banner metals are like. So anyways, guys, let's dig a little deeper. Before I get into this, just know we're about to start digging into some storylines, some speculation, and also some of the grimoire on what's all behind the Iron Lords and what this possible DLC might be bringing to the table. I wouldn't be reading this off of someone else's post. This is somebody that I've, I've just got to reading the whole thing, and I, I find it to be a reputable source, one that's actually dug a lot more into the Grim Armor than more than I have. And uh, I give him a huge shout out, Vishan or Vishahana. <laughs> How the hell you say his name? Anyways, huge shout out to you guy, uh, you man, you lady could be a woman. I don't know for for looking into this. Appreciate so much, guys. You read along with me if you want. We're gonna be checking this out. Uh, this is gonna be into the Iron Lords themselves. What happened? What's going on? Why Lord Saladin is Lord Saladin? How he became a lord and an Iron Lord on top of that. So this will be surrounded on the assumption that Rise of Iron will be about Iron Banner and looking at the armor that seems to be the case. So let's go, guys. Um. So anyways, this guy says he starts it off with the Battle of Six Fronts. And that's where we're going to start right here. The Iron Lords were heroes that gained fame at the Battle of Six Fronts, which involved the perfect defense of the newly found city from a fallen attack. So fallen was, I think, the first thing they intercepted. This was a very early period for Guardians, who must have been a new and strange phenomenon, especially for a newly arrived pilgrims who were seeking refuge under the Traveler. It also becomes apparent that the Vanguard and the Crucible did not exist at this time. So there were instead four orders of titans present at the battle, and although we don't know which exactly, we can make some educated guesses. You can make arguments for the Stoneborn, who never fell according to Zavala, and have their symbol carved in the first wall, the Pilgrim Guard, who defended the first pilgrims to the Traveler, helping form the city. And the Sun Legion, Banshee 44, who is apparently very old, as he is not a guardian and has been reset 44 times, recalls the Titan Order. The four groups held the chain, which is apparently the name given to their formation. The grimoire implies that while the defense held perfectly, it came at a heavy toll. Six fronts is often called the city's darkest hour, and many titans fell during the fight. So the, I think the green right here, guys, is actually the grimoire. So the mark of the chain, even at six fronts, the city's darkest hour, some titans broke orders, but the chains prevailed. After six fronts, many did not agree with the strategy behind the chain and wanted to counterattack, including Saint-14. This may have led to the formation of the Firebreak Order, which is a propensity for headbutting, as Saint-14 was known to do, and maybe even the Sunbreakers, given the probable involvement of the Sun Legion and the name makes sense after the battle. Osiris gained notoriety during the battles while appearing to be everywhere at once, perhaps using Vex technology to his advantage. The most noted heroes of the day who became legends were founding members of the Iron Banner. As others fell in the chaos of fire and iron, they remained. Wolves would cloak in our darkest iron, nine iron wolves emerged from ruins. Wolves would bond under a red dawn, the iron wolves gathered beneath the iron wood. Wolves would mark, and beneath its branches, the iron wolves forged an unbreakable oath. So, of course, I guess after six fronts when they, they formed the iron banner themselves. So, I think the iron banners were originally iron lords, perhaps what they were known as before the former organization of the iron banner. Lone wolves with strengths of the pack. 
This is noted in the strength of the Wolf Crucible medal, which not only matches the Iron Banner symbol, but it is awarded when your team scores 10 kills with zero deaths. The Iron One Tree, which must have also stood against the ruins in the aftermath of the battle, which of course y'all know where that is, seems to be an appropriate symbol in this respect. The Oath of Iron Banner was probably related to fighting the darkness. Remember at this point, the Vanguard doesn't exist. Guardians were necessarily actively fighting the darkness like they are during the events of the game. Or they weren't actually fighting the darkness like they like we are in the game. The Battle of Six Fronts seems to have proven proved both the active threat of the darkness and the Guardians' ability to combat it. The Iron Banner was probably the first attempt at making a fighting force to push back. But this partnership between FRD, Gillian, Baroon, with the Hunters, Joder, Raygas, Selimar, uh, the Titans, and Fellwinter Scorian to more, the Warlocks didn't last long. Uh, Ray Gas Blade. So long as this sword was whole, the Iron Banner could not be broken. We have Ray Gas Broken Blade, which implies the partnership was indeed broken. Seagot's Head. Thought we formed the banner to fight the darkness, not ourselves. Just don't bode well. That's all I'm saying. Gillian. That's a quote from him. Gillian reveals a lot here. This Proto Vanguard fell to infighting, perhaps starting as competition amongst quasi immortals. This is pretty likely, as actual real life studies have shown that gathering highly skilled individuals together often leads to competition rather than collaboration. Okay, uh, alright. Weapons such as Sinmarsh Rass, Fellwinter's Lie, Ray Gas Fury, Scorious Revenge, and Gillian's Demise implies that things got pretty dark. Yeah, the names do imply that if you if you really look into that. So, but this is also perhaps the origin of the Crucible as we know it. Before this moment in the city's history, it doesn't seem like Guardians were fighting amongst themselves for competition. But based on Seagot's head and Gillian's demise, it would seem that they took too far and began permanently killing each other, destroying ghosts, etc. So what was the end result of all this? So Scory's dirge, they say she's apart from the Iron Banner, yet she sings songs of her lost companions. So the aftermath. I think it's safe to assume that all the original Iron Lords fell. This means that Silence is perhaps a late member. He speaks about the ancient Iron Lords as if they were apart from him. And he is called a hero of Twilight Gap, not Six Fronts, that we just previously read about. Sometimes after the fall of the first Iron Lords, the Vanguard was formed along with the City Council, continuing their efforts to combat the darkness. But with much more organization and authority, Saint-14 nominated Osiris to be the Vanguard commander, noting him to be a rare pragmatic warlock after showing remarkable skill at six fronts. And while Osiris did serve, he eventually disappeared to Mercury. So Saladin would take his place as commander by the time of the Battle of Twilight Gap. So Saladin's protege, protege's Shax and Zavala proved themselves during this time known as the city's greatest battle. Afterwards, Zavala took Saladin's place as commander. Shax, however, had a disagreement with Saladin and formed the modern Crucible, his own perfected version of competition among Guardians. There is some evidence that this was done in collaboration with Osiris. Shax seems to be in communication with the cult at the very least. So the Grimoire, Osiris, I hear stories of Lord Shax meeting with fire teams of warlocks who have no shadow and never blink. So, of course, that would link to Osiris. The Whispering Spear, you can't be sure, but you think you've seen Lord Shat speaking into a spear just like this one. Gamora, Disciples of Osiris, despite all of Shaq's work with the Crucible, we must accept that the Tower may never be ready to accept this t the trials. So I guess everything was leading up to the trials in uh, speaking with Osiris and of course doing everything collaborating with him to perfect uh, a way in which Guardians will finally be able to accept or walk into and, and try out trials. This probably didn't help the estrangement between Saladin and Jax, however Saladin would eventually return to the tower to honor the memory of the Iron Lords through the Iron Banner event that we know today. Jax seems to think this is a bit too touchy-feely. Do you like it better when Lord Saladin oversees these matches? Do I look like I care? Get back in there. All right. He's just, yeah, he's just angry. So anyways, guys, that is this. Huge shout out to uh, Vijan, Vijan Hanley, 
and uh, for for looking into this and, and getting this out but back to this oh my god we could begin another dlc and it could be epic and it's gonna be surrounding iron lords and a little bit more of the lore and grammar of of everything that happened in in the past might even un unravel some of the mysteries behind the traveler himself and kind of just dig into it so freaking awesome i hope this actually is going to be something that hits 2016 because as you know 2016 nothing is looking very bright for the end of this tunnel right now at least until 2017 so if this is something that's going to hit this september which as you know like most things everything is kind of following the same order that it's always has and so if it is to hit this september it's going to probably be a very sizable update now again that kind of i kind of was like digging a little too deep I was thinking, man, they, they held off Trials of Osiris this past weekend, you know. I know that was also because of glitch, but I mean, they also held it off. I wonder if this has anything to do with it. But I think it's just hopeful thinking. It would be nice, uh, but it is also very hopeful thinking. So, all right, guys, tell me what your thoughts are. Are you psyched? Are you happy to begin in the DLC? Hopefully this is, man. Hopefully it's coming. Are you happy that it's kind of surrounding a little more of the lore and 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 more of the Iron Lord, some 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 of that's good stuff. So uh, I'd love to hear you guys, your guys' comments. Like and subscribe, guys, if you're new to my channel. Uh, guys, thanks for coming and watching. Catch all of you later.